Hello guys, Buttery Butters here, welcome you back to more Terraria Mod Mosh Pit. If you missed the last episode, we beat three bosses, uh, not without some failures. Uh, ignore the failures. In this episode, we're actually just probably going to be building, to be honest. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, boss, that's not the boss checklist, that's my teleport key. Great job. We've got Krabion, Rue, and Eater of Worlds as our next three bosses, plus Goblin Army. Um... I don't know which mod adds it, but there's actually a standard summoner in... I misspelled standard. Wonderful. Goblin standard summoner. Uh, just takes silk and, uh... Specifically boreal wood. I think that's Louis... Not, uh, the old recipe enabler from... IMK Sushi. There we are. But yeah, you can summon that. And, uh... I've already got... If I could sort my inventory here. Two... Crabion Sprouters, it's really easy to make. It just takes 15 uh, glowing mushrooms, which, if I didn't make my own mushroom biome already, because I had to, uh, the Alchemist sells them. Uh, they're not too expensive, especially if you're playing in Revengeance mode. And then the Desert Crown summons the Rue. It takes a gold crown, so gold bars and rubies. Sand, which I actually need to get more of since I have none. Antlion Mandibles, which I have a buttload, and Antlion Shells, which I don't have enough to make a second summoner. So probably after I'm done building, I'm going to farm Antlion Shells and Sand off screen. So there's that. Uh, if Goblin Army spawns naturally, I'll take care of it during the episode, but I think I want to defeat Krabulon and Rue in the next episode, possibly Eater of Worlds. And then, depending on how long the episode is, then I will summon Goblin Army and fight it in a montage. Because I don't think any mods and anything new to the Goblin Army. Except that Tremor adds you would as drops from the Goblin Army. And that makes a magic set of armor, I believe. Or rain set, I can't remember. It's one of the two. Um, and if you remember in my last episode, I was wondering how the hell I could get the Architect and the Traveling Merchant to move in. They both require the Eater of Worlds or the Brain of Cthulhu to have been defeated before they'll move in, so... Turns out carrying all that money on my inventory was literally just me tempting fate. So yeah, um, also, when you defeat the Eye of Cthulhu, the hunter over here... ...will sell Jester's arrows for a silver each, so that's a hundred arrows for one gold, and I have all the money in the world, so... <clears throat> I know I am almost exclusively trying to use magic and melee weapons, but... Having a sea bow with Jester's Arrows is going to make farming things a lot easier. And in addition, I don't think I've shown you guys the Starfall Tome, which I got. And I think that's it. I'm going to be... Also, um... I made... I had to use T-Edit, and trust me, I did have to use T-Edit. That is my best mushroom biome. The rest of my mushroom biomes are either... If I can go here about from here to here in length, or they're intersected by lava lakes, actual lakes, or literally even smaller than that. I have no half-decent mushroom biomes in this world, so I actually had to go into T-Edit and extend one into this. And that's not even a big mushroom biome for Krabulon. That's acceptable. And I'm pretty sure for death mode that wouldn't be acceptable. What this is, is an Arcane Armor Fabricator from Thorium. Basically, this allows you to make some of Thorium's, uh, s stuff. Which, you know, the U wood from the Goblin Invasion and some other things need this, so... There's that. I don't think it actually works in the crafting station, but anyway. I have <clears throat> used T-Edit to save some time, because I work 40 hours a week, and I won't apologize for that. That's why you see all of these. I can actually fix that later. But yeah, I just flatten this entire area out. Grass will spread naturally. Uh, what? That's not a fail. Don't update the fail counter. I didn't fail. Didn't actually fail. This is all your fault. I blame you. Anyway, I'm gonna plan on hollowing out this tree. I can buy um or. I, I think I can buy normal uh, living wood stuff if I don't already have living a living wood wand and a living leaf wand. And I also can buy uh, 
uh, grass walls and stuff. So what I can do is I can hollow out the tree and put like a different house on each of the branches because I want to try to theme my houses a little bit. I want the Dryad, the Witch Doctor, the Tracker, who's a new NPC, and the Ranger to all have sort of um, nature houses. And underneath here, I want the Alchemist, the Brewer, the Young Brewer, uh, the other Alchemist from whichever mod adds it, to have sort of darker underground, like, alchemy -y houses, if that makes sense. And then underneath the tree, I would like the... Traveling Merchant, the Desert Acolyte, and the Merchant to have like a gold-based house, which I can just get gold ore from uh, stone blocks with the Extract Editor, so there's that. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, the guide, I probably want in a basic wooden house. I will um, eventually get the Angler moving in, even though I can get the Angler rewards from bosses, but I'll build like a little mini house right here and put the Angler in it. And I'll probably use T-Edit to move that house over, because I really like that house. Anyway, I guess I'll stop explaining shit and get building, but, uh, yeah. Now I remember what I wanted to do before actually building. I want to show you guys the mushroom biome that I created. Yeah, t I, I t ooh, there's a heart crystal there. I t-edited it through a house, because I'm a dingus. And there is a chest down here. Staff of regrowth, staff of regrowth, an extractinator, and an eyeball. Well, I need more demonite to upgrade magic storage. Yeah, there, there are new enemies literally everywhere. I'm gonna probably want to pick up some of that granite because there's a pretty good uh, magic gun called the Magna Striker that I really want to get. And it takes granite and some other stuff. I think opals and basically it's it's a magic gun that fires gems. Oh hi. Biclomere is one of the Thorium mods. I have no idea what they drop. A magic mirror and another eyeball. I'm just getting all the good luck today. And there's another one of those army ants. Okay, they go over one tile wide uh, blocks. Uh, two tile wide blocks. That's annoying. Uh, that's Eula Bloom, another calamity ore that I can't mine until very late. Ooh, oh. Another heart crystal. And a jungle spore. Thank you. I need jungle spores to make the jungle set that Thorium adds. And here it is. This is what I made. Oh. Didn't even realize there was an enemy there. Uh, I'm gonna probably sell that magic mirror so I'll get rid of that mushroom. There was a heart crystal there. I realized after making it that I can't get through two tile-wide spaces, so yeah. I'm gonna have to reorganize this entire thing to make it slightly wider. What the? How did I miss this one piece of mud? Anyway, there was a heart crystal there, and there is actually, this is something I have yet to open. It's another one of the shrines. And I didn't actually realize it was here until I saw the heart crystal and I had a sunshine potion active. What do we got? Lava waders. That's great. That saves me a ton of grinding. Lava waders are really annoying to farm. Uh, let's get rid of the invisibility potion. I'll take the gold. There's mahogany. Hello, skeleton. And, uh, what do we have? Flaming arrows? Screw them. Recall potions? Screw them. Skeleton? Screw them. Chest? Don't screw the obsidian chest. Alright, I think, now that I've shown you guys that, and shown you guys where all my stuff was, I'm gonna head back to base, and I'm just gonna... I need all the help I can get, let's be real. Yeah, seashell boomerang's actually viable. Storm spray is really good for that last stage. And if I had more summons, I'd try to storm spray for the entire thing. And as well as, you know, no more mana regen. Alright, now to actually building, now that I've farmed uh, Scourgey for some more magic storage upgrades. Alright guys, quickly before I start building as a little bit of a sidebar, uh, creator to viewer and all that, you may have noticed I've jumped into this world a couple of times with my main character from hard mode, and 
I'm gonna go ahead and just say that he's kind of like my character's guardian angel, if you will. Every time there's something that I can't quite do without tons and tons of grinding, I'll just hop in here with the guardian angel and take care of it. And yeah, uh, one of those things... I may or may not have made a little bit of a testament to my inability to game. Say hello to the mausoleum. Uh, I made this with T-Edit, so yeah, that's the reason why I probably won't be actually showing this with my other character, but this is kind of like this character, just keeping track of the other character. And as you can tell, I have all the headstones that I could find. Uh, the uh, Slime God was actually one, but the Grappling Fail, the... Uh, Nidrion Cushion and the Desert Scourge Micropixel were all ones I couldn't find because I flattened out that desert completely and erased these in T-Edit by accident. So, the good Guardian Angel decided to drown uh, three times to get these headstones in there. But, in future, I will be going back to save all my headstones and put them in a headstones chest. And then, uh, off-camera, the Guardian Angel will come by and put them in here and we'll add platforms as we go along. Because, as you can tell, the bottom row can fit 12, and I might need to extend it <laughs> the way I play. So yeah, on to the actual build.
stuck there. Oh god. Boss fight? I can hit it. What you got? What you got? A lot of gems. You dropped two of every gem. I'd like you. I'm gonna call you Jim Waifu. Alright, I think the Blood Moon's finally over and oh my god, look at this shit. Oh my goodness. Me almighty above and below. Ah, oh, 50 gold, 100 unholy shards. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot. Only six untreated flesh. That's a tiny bit surprising, to be honest. Okay, um... Yeah, I'm gonna sell a bunch of this shit because I don't need it. Uh, stigmata. Oh, it basically boosts your damage the lower your health is. I was trying to figure out what the hell to... I needed to do this, and it turns out I just need more sand, so... I can get the sand off-screen because that's boring as all hell. The stigmata turns into this gives you more critical strike chance. I have no idea what any of that stuff is, but apparently it's from Tremor, so. Uh, we got Dripping Roots, also from Tremor. It's used to make the Brainiac. I need 15 Addis Bloods, and those are rare drops from rare enemies, so that's great. And a drop, and it also takes, makes the Gross Bow. Which is just powerful, slow bow. Eh, nothing too interesting. Zombie Eskimo banner, of course, because I killed so many of them. Uh, nothing of real consequence, except I got a couple bags of potential and a bunch of unholy shards, so I just want to see how much these sell for. Hello, Daniel? Eh, nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy there either, unfortunately. Sell the shackle. Sell the loot bags and sell the zombie arm. And might as well sell the banner too. Uh, yeah, it didn't really get anything interesting at all in that Blood Moon, which is a bit sad. Got some more Thorium Ore. I wish there was a better way to get it. Untreated Flesh, Alpha Claws, banners, and all this fun stuff. It's gonna be a real pain in the ass transferring 287 items over to my new base when it's finished, but. Yeah, I don't think I'm fighting any bosses in this episode. I think episode 4 is entirely base building and exploration. And all that stuff. So, I explored a little bit more of the underground desert. Found some rooms. Nothing too crazy. Uh, yeah. And, um... I guess even though you watched it in the speed build, I will still show it off. Uh, this was going to be an obsidian generator, but I fucked up the design. So, yeah, there's that. There's no obsidian being generated there because I'm a doof. A big doof. The biggest doof. There are many doofs like me, but I'm the biggest. Anyway, uh, these are the... F this is the basically the root of the base. I have Tremor, or Thorium, or Zoklin's Alchemist. Uh, Kalem... Uh, Alchemist NPC's Alchemist, and the Brewer, and eventually, I'm not sure who's gonna go in here, the Young Brewer, perhaps? I'm not sure. Anyway, we got the Dryad's House, nice and simple, the, uh, Tracker, I believe, or the Hunter, and he gives you, uh, Vanquisher medals every single time you defeat, um, enemies that he sets out for you, and I think it, the contract stays, nope, this is different. Illuminating, blah blah blah. So, gilded enemies, those are actually quite rare. Gilded enemies are basically just enemies that have gold on them. That will eventually be the Witch, witch Doctor's house. I still have to add some leaves to it, but yeah, I wanted a bit of a natural feel there. And I guess I will possibly add some more NPC housing off screen, change the spawn, all that fun stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed more of a laid back building type episode, even though there was not much commentary to it. In the next episode, once I farm off a few more summoners, we're going to fight uh, Rue and Krabulon and the Goblin Army, and I think I'll leave Eater of Worlds and Queen Jellyfish in their own episode. 
After that, I think it's Evil Corn, Storm Jellyfish, and Hive Mind. And then after that, Ancient Dragon. No idea how to spawn him. Does that actually show you? A Rusty Lantern. Okay. Requires the Ruins Power Buff and Ruined Altar nearby. I have no idea what the hell that is. Does this need anything else? Requires either Eye of Cthulhu to be slain. That's fine. And I need to use a Storm Jelly. Evil Corn. Requires Nighttime. Cursed Popcorn. I think that's sold by the Cook during a Blood Moon. I should have bought it. Nah. Tiki Totem. Use a Mysterious Jum in the Jungle. Queen Jellyfish. A Jellyfish Resonator on the Beach during the Day. And obviously the Desert Crown requires a Desert Biome. It doesn't actually say it, but I'm pretty sure it needs to be fought during the day. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. Make sure to leave comments for any suggestions for bases or items. Keep in mind, I am not comfortable with magic or melee, so any tips for either class would be appreciated. So, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye I can never find the end record button.